Uh, we got the Orlando Magic heading to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, Magic still uh, no uh, Paolo Banchero. He's going to be out for a while. Uh, Magic catching 12 and a half in Oklahoma, plus 550 on the money line. Total at 215 and a half. Dare we lay this big number with the Oklahoma City Thunder, Doug? Yes. <laughs> yes. Next question. Look, yes. this is a complete this is a complete mismatch with Orlando not having Van Caro. Um o- Oak City can flip a switch and go on a 13-0 run. So I just I'm scared to bet into them too. Like that's the other thing is you can be sitting all game on the right side, then all of a sudden they go on that 9-0 run and it's a timeout. So they they scare me. That's why they're five and one ATS. Um they're just that good. They're undefeated, obviously. Um, them and the Cavs are the only two teams that are still undefeated. And I don't think they take sort of uh, a game off. Um, you know, they're they're gonna be there's gonna be a flat spot at some point. I get it, but they're less likely to have a flat spot than almost any team because I think they're on a mission this year, having getting knocked out even early in the playoffs by their standards. I think they're ready to rock and they're on a vengeance. Like I think I would have made SGA the betting favorite for MVP, and I think he is now at yep. all books. Like they're gonna have the better <laughs> record. He won't have as gaudy of stats as Luca, but. They're going to have the one seed. They might win like six, six, 68 games. They're that good. I think Chet's going to win defensive player of the year. I recommend that buy as well. Um, but they're just, they're, they're going to overwhelm the magic. And they play good enough defense that Orlando's going to have a really tough time scoring. So I think the Thunder, just so well coached, just too many, vo- the, the volume of possessions, the magic are not going to be able to hang around over the course of four quarters. Yeah, no, I mean the Magic. Uh, it's frustrating because they kind of were a, they were a fun team. I I had some options yeah. for them, and now with no Bancaro, it's like ah man, you guys really needed him, and this matchup would have been at least way more interesting. Uh, you mentioned the Chet stuff, yeah, and and I think uh, you know why people were high on the Thunder. I feel like we hit on it uh, on the Future Show a bunch. Is this is like a young team that's probably super motivated to get the number one seed. They show up at home. Um, I, I think they have a legit home court. Yeah, I can't uh, get to anything officially just because it's twelve and a half. But yeah, I I would not be uh, taking the magic here, even even at the big number. Make it a good case for the Thunder there, Doug. Carl, uh, any any plays, any insight for this matchup? So yeah, Banchero obviously is, is a big deal. Um, something that I kind of hasn't been mentioned that maybe I think has gone under the radar a little bit is uh, Wendell Carter Jr. status. He uh, was scratched last minute on, yeah. I believe it was Friday. Um, fr- yeah, I think it was Friday. Um, and then last night, the- Orlando's gone a back to back, which is partially why this number is so large. Um, but last night he uh, played, but then I think re aggravated something and didn't return for the second half. Um, and so he's questionable again. Um, if he were to play in this game, I would actually lean towards Orlando. I just, I, I, as much as I think Oklahoma city is the best team in the West, um, this is a lot of points. Um, Orlando, because they got blown out by Dallas yesterday, um, their starters didn't play a ton of minutes there. So they're, you know, I guess relatively rested, um, but it would it would depend on Wendell Carter Jr.'s status for this game for me. Uh, if he plays, then I would lean towards Orlando. Otherwise, uh, passing on this game. Lock it up for Doug. One thing, yeah. One thing. One thing to mention, and just this goes for all games, not just this one. Is odds makers hate these situations, okay? Because they want a perfect world, both teams at full strength, right? Cowboys, Eagles, Sunday night football, give me a minus three home team. All right, let, let's fire away, right? It's it's when there's a star injury or something like that. That's when they don't they don't know what to do with like props for guys that are out like like the Celtics tonight without Jalen Brown. Like, what do we do for Peyton Pritchard's props? Like they, they don't like that because they think there's vulnerability. When everybody's in full, full strength, they have the power ratings, they know what to do. It's clockwork, right? It's rinse and repeat. So in this situation, none of us, uh, you know, obviously if Carl's on an iron opposite side, one of us would be right, but we don't know the power rating of Orlando without Van Caro. We don't know what the player props and the books don't either. And frankly, we don't know. The coach probably hasn't figured out his rotation. The coach hasn't figured out, like, maybe it's a minutes thing. Like, he's figuring it out. It's a shock to the system. Van Caro was ready to take the leap this year. Yeah. He dropped a 50-burger last week. So this is a complete 
um, disruption of what they are envisioning. So in theory, if you know this team, there should be a good like betting angles, at least in the short term, in the immediate future. So I would say, you know, looking live wagering, things like that. But this is like, you know, a headache for odds makers because when it's a super a team that has you know, so reliant on one guy, um, it completely derails what their whole vi- vision was for the upcoming season. Yeah, and their plus minus hasn't been great. Uh, as Carl mentioned, it's a back to back, like just such a tough uh, spot here for Orlando. And yeah, to your point, like it, uncertainty is bad for the bookmakers, but if you got an angle on it and some insight like that, then it ends up being uh, good for you. Yeah, I, I, uh, the more we talk it out, the more uh, Oklahoma City laying the 12 and a half becomes uh, somewhat intriguing, even though it is a big number. Lock it up for Doug officially on the Thunder laying 12 and a half at home and appreciate everyone tuning in, tossing us a thumbs up, smashing that subscribe button and uh, keep tossing in some questions. We'll get to as many as we can.